So the first increment that I want to complete for my Wonky Kong game is the basic control of my monkey, right? So the idea is what should my monkey do when this game runs? And I think, let's go over to the monkey, we'll go over to the program. I think there are really only a couple of things that we need to get in this first increment. First of all, we need to have the idea of places everybody, right? When the game is started, when the green flag is clicked, we want the monkey to reset himself. Uh, and so, what, is, what do we mean by resetting? So the monkey looks about the right size right now. I don't think I need to do too much with that. Uh, I might want to make sure that he's pointing in the right direction and that he's in the right place. Uh, I, even though he's not centered right now, I'm going to send him to the center. All right, let's try sending him to zero, the exact center of the screen, and negative 118. I'm pointing in the right direction. Uh, and just in case, uh, let's show him. Right? And so that's a good way to, for us to get started. Those are sort of the... You know, I want him to go to his places when he gets started. Right? That's one little thing we could do. And then maybe to add to this increment or, or to continue with this increment, we want to do the basic control. We want to have the ability to move the monkey back and forth at the bottom of the screen. And I said I want to do this with keyboard events for this game. We could just as easily do this with mouse events. We could use the idea of Pong that was uh, that we saw in the introductory task and have the, the mouse, the monkey follow my cursor. But I'm going to use keyboard events. So I'm going to go into events and I'm going to drag out you know, two of these key pressed. And I want to know what happens when the left arrow is pressed and what happens when the right arrow is pressed. And we have a couple of options with this, right? The one that you probably are most, f would come most to mind is just the idea of using a move block, right? That when we press the left arrow, I want to move 10 steps backwards. And when I use the right arrow, I want to move 10 steps forward. And that works pretty well, right? You can see it right now. I'm just move pressing the left arrow and the right arrow, and the monkey is moving left and right at the bottom of the screen. Now, that's an okay way to do this. The problem with using this technique, where, where we could potentially get into problems, is that if the monkey somehow turned a little bit, then when I'm using left and right, he's, you know, he's turning steps based on his direction. And the reality is, I don't really care how the monkey's oriented. I don't want the monkey uh, to, be, to be moving up and down like that. And so what I'm going to choose to use rather than the move is to use the idea of just changing his x coordinates. Right? When I press the x, the right arrow, I want his x coordinate to increase by 10 pixels. And when I press the left arrow, I want his x coordinate to, inc to decrease by 10 pixels. And it wouldn't be wrong if you'd used the other version. But the advantage of this is I still get the same functionality. right? He moves left and right, regardless of what happens. And now, even if maybe somehow he got turned on his side a little bit, as I use the left and right arrow keys, he actually continues to glide along the bottom. And so if something happens later on in development, uh, we, we still want him to move just along the x axis. And so we're going to use that. Okay. That's a good first increment right there. It may seem overly simple. You may say, wait, the bananas aren't falling. There's no you know, scorekeeping. There's no, it doesn't matter. Right? We want to get one thing and get it working well. Now we've got it so that when we press the green flag, the monkey resets and I can control him left and right. That's a good first increment. In the next increment, we'll worry about how to make the bananas move.